I, because he was my son. Mm. Can, you, can you speak on that? Can I speak on it? Sure. Like you said, it was your son. He died because of your. He was liquor. targeted because he he's my son. Can, you like, already know what it is. It's your boy laid back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Jaguar, right? Diddy, you up to bat. Bah. It's your boy laid back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back. Make sure you hit the like button, man. We got some more TikToks. We got Jaguar right. We got some more uh, leak footage of some, I don't know. We got some sh on this one. But you make it to the end of this one, man. You a real one for real. Make sure you put that in the comments. Also, I got a TikTok playlist. You can go through and binge watch. I got a whole bunch of other type of stuff in there. Conspiracy theories, all that type of stuff. But we're going to go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad. What's popping? Let's get it. Yo. I, listen, listen. I, I got to talk about this. I have to. Even though it's a distraction, but I had to. Because this just dropped like an hour ago. If you don't know. Yo. There's arrest warrants for seven. Seven celebrities right now. They said they already arrested some of them. Oh. Oh my God. The names of the seven. Do your own research. Do your own research. Let's go. And let me just say, there's a lot of shit coming out about J-Lo. She's not even one of the people that are arrested right now. The seven I'm a name, and then I'm gonna tell you the story I just heard. And it, 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 you can look this up, this is facts, this is facts. First, the first seven, the seven, the seven celebrities Man, are Drake, you. Rick Ross, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, and Will Smith. Again, let me repeat the seven, and I'm gonna tell you the story. This is this is this is juicy, and I know it's a distraction, but hey, I'm kind of glad these stars are falling from the sky, which is biblical. Again, Rick Ross, Drake, Jay Z, Beyonce, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, Will Smith, and J Lo's not even one of them, but she will be because this is even on the Stephen A. Smith podcast. And bro, I'm gonna show you a picture where I'm gonna direct you to this what the video. And then go watch the three. It's part three. Come on, man. It just dropped. Just dropped. Just dropped. So this is breaking news. <clears throat> they are vindicating Shine. They're going so back in Diddy's dirt wow. that they're proving that Diddy got Shine set up and he did all those years over a lying testimony by Jayla. Y'all remember when Jayla mm. was a witness and the reason why Shine went to jail and got his life ruined? Yeah. There's all this tapes proving that. Shine didn't kill no one. Shine went to jail for no reason. And that Diddy set that up. And it all resorts back to J-Lo and her testimony saying it was him. You ever wonder why? They're, they're, people are wondering, or not the no, people, but celebrities are like, how you be engaged to Diddy for a year and you not know what's going on? Oh, you knew what was going on. Oh, you were part of it. Oh, they were part of it. But that's why you're seeing J-Lo now trying to remarry Ben. and She's trying to put herself so far away from this. But, bro... Go to this video right here. This is part three, and this is this is facts. I looked this shit up. This is look at the seven, all the seven Jones got arrest warrants right arrest now. Warrants for what celebrities involved? The in gossip twenty four seven. That is the name of the page. I would go to this so fast, so fast, and watch this to see what if I said is true. Seven celebrities got arrest warrants. Their names. Look at Ellen, look at Oprah. Y'all let me know, because this, this dude's showing me something, and it ain't got no likes, no comments, no shares, no nothing. I don't know <laughs> where he got this information from. Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Oh, look at Will Smith, look at Drake, look at Jay-Z, Beyonce. Get them. Get them all burned. They need to burn. We need no more, no more fucking liking celebrities. That's the one thing. You can call this a distraction, but I call this people waking up. Peace to God. will be exposed i mean when i walk in i mean i i definitely um take pride in being the originator of the pre preparation of the sex little, little things that I, I personally like a lot of ladies they right. just you know so you have if you don't have what they need they're gonna leave right gotta right. keep them there right you need, you need locks on the doors p diddy be wanting the body 
and you got to tell him no. Oh, you no. got to tell him no. All of these no. uh, big, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. This is some fake stuff. Got to be. Or maybe not. I don't know. Like they want to see what you allow, what you cool with, and then next thing you know, boom, take that drink, you're drugged. Take that, you're out of it. Take mm -hmm. that pill, because everybody was off something. But you had to be being in that environment many, like that. How many people were at this event? Uh, like hundreds. Damn. Even when it was a certain amount outside, but in the house was really crowded. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that, like, it was, yeah, it was more people in the house. And you walked around? Yeah, I walked around for about five minutes. I seen what I needed to see. And I was like, no, ma'am. No, sir. Because it was like selling your soul at that house. And mm. if you like that, it's nothing to you. But if you're not like that, you're going to feel uncomfortable. And then it's like, at first, I used to think P. Diddy was like, so he like rep he always talk about team love and all of this stuff. Like he's all about, no, he all about sex himself. Mm. And I know sex because I've dealt, you know, I've dealt with men, Mark. So I know when somebody is trying to lead you on to stuff and sitting back acting like he just this macho man. And he is a charmer, though. That's one thing. Like, he will charm the fuck out of you. But for me, that's so game tight. I'm like, I know what this is. And I'm ready to get to the music. Like, mm. if that's the case, you should have been like, don't tell me you about to change my life and da-da-da-da. Oh, have you been writing? Oh, that's nothing, too. He was like, have you been writing the songs that um, I've seen been telling you to write? Because the prince wanted me to write out all the songs I ever made in my life. I said, without the beat? He's like, yeah, just start writing songs. So you never know. They'll take my music, drug me. Fuck me, do whatever, and just throw me away, mm. basically. Or after you have something on me, when we do do the music, you have that on me that this happened, and now I'm blackmailed or some shit like that. Mm. So <sighs> touching all on me at that party, even the rapper who touched all on me, like that rapper was cool. Like I was liking that rapper, but when they were like, "Hey, you," and doing all that. What can I do? All I could do is just say, like, move his hand, like, oh, I'm fine, but, you know, trying to, like, still be cool. But I'm like, why do everybody feel comfortable to just touch on you? Even P. Diddy, like, why do you, why I look up and you're right there? And then, like, in my face, like, are you, like, in my house? Like, look, like it's weird. Like, looking at him is like when you're a kid and you're getting in trouble by your parent and you can't look them in their face. Mm. And it's like, a demon. I'm telling you, like this dark spirit, like he possessing you as he's looking at you. That power, that control. So I'm like, Damn. I read the art of seduction, motherfucker. I know what you're doing, and you're trying to really seduce me right now. And oh, take a drink. Oh no, oh, do this, do that. Go in there. Like it's just not nothing. And I want to know why me go in the house and why not the girl. So now you're picking and choosing. This stuff is deep as hell. Viewer discretion is extremely advised. Guys, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. I have actual footage, videos, and still pictures of Diddy's private parties at his mansion. Check this out. Bruh, is this real or this AI? Is this real or is this AI? If this real, this is really, really crazy. Get in the comments, guys. I want to know what you guys think. This is some really bizarre, disturbing footage straight out of a, a horror movie. But I want to hear from you. Get in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. You know, deliver a message. It was important, important. Like, I had to do it. He said, long story short, I went to security guard. I told him how important it was. He let me in the room. And when I came in the room, I seen Puffy busting 
and just getting it in. It's more deeper questions that I be wanting to know. Like, why were you so infatuated with a child that wasn't yours? Were you grooming that little boy? I don't even want to start those conversations because that's not your child. I want to know what Justin Bieber, all these, I want to know. That man is terrified of Puffy. I seen the video. I'm in the streets, dog. You and, like, people know, you know fear, dog. It's kind of hard mm. to explain because it's hard to explain because then you're going to figure out what I'm talking about. Freddie P, a former member of Sean Diddy Combs' dub band, recently <laughs> dropped dub bombshell band. revelations about Diddy's private life. In this new interview with Freddie, he exposes a lot of the Hollywood celebrities that Diddy has secretly been using behind closed doors. According to Freddie, his friend had been trying for some time to pass on a critical message to Diddy, insisting that it was important enough to be delivered personally. After persuading the security guard to allow him access to Diddy's private room, Freddie's friend entered completely unaware of the secret he was about to uncover. Mm. Upon entering, the friend was stunned to see Diddy in the middle of a sexual encounter with none other than comedian Kevin Hart. The sight of Diddy and Hart engaged in sexual activities was not just shocking because of who was involved, but because of the power and secrecy surrounding Diddy's inner circle. And when I came in the room, what? I seen Puffy busting. They was getting it in. Freddie's friend, caught off guard by what he witnessed, knew immediately that this was a secret that could never be shared, at least not without serious repercussions. I can say this, because I've been saying it while he was out. I'm one of the few people been calling this out for years. They ain't scared of who? I've been telling this where you at? I'm not scared of you. Kevin Hart, known for his wholesome public persona and comedic roles, was now implicated in a world far removed from the laughter and good-natured image he projects to his fans. Mm. Freddie went on to explain that this moment was a turning point for his friend. He realized that exposing Diddy's secret could potentially destroy not just Diddy, but Kevin Hart as well. The power dynamics in the entertainment industry, especially under someone as influential as Diddy, meant that staying silent was the safest and perhaps only option. Mm. Freddie also hinted that Kevin Hart was not an innocent bystander in Diddy's world, but rather someone who had attended Diddy's notorious freak-offs, wild hedonistic parties where sexual mm. activities, often fueled by drugs and alcohol, were encouraged or coerced. These freak-offs have been at the center of the allegations against Diddy, and Freddie's story only deepens the disturbing narrative surrounding the music mogul. Over the years, rumors have circulated about what went on at these parties, and leaked videos have reportedly Man, shown celebrities. This stuff is wild. The stuff that's gonna come out gonna be crazy. So I, I was aware of the Diddy cameras around the home, but I never saw them, you see. So his cameras maybe had a been a little bit more hidden. But Hugh Hefner's cameras were very, very old school, so you could see them. They were like right there, you know? So when you hear about the allegations and what's happened to these celebrities and them, you know, being in the moment and, and forgetting there's cameras there and mm. doing the things that they've done, it's very easily done. Mm. I don't know who that lady was. Let me know. Okay, so I guess it started the first official S tape belonging to P. Diddy is being offered around the major news networks and newspapers. Who has it? At the moment, they're having nothing to do with it, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, the video purportedly shows P. Diddy and a younger male celeb engaged in a certain act we're not going to go into. And the reason that the newspapers and the media outlets don't want anything to do with this right now is not because it's not a great story or it's not big news, because obviously it is. Um, it's because, and this is a little bit disturbing, they cannot verify the age of this A-list celeb at the time mm. the video was taken. They can't tell whether he was an adult at the time or a minor. Mm. Now, according to an insider, um, the A-list celeb concerned has acknowledged the video and said it's disturbing and it brings up triggering trauma memories. Is this real? He doesn't want to deal with. He's hoping it all goes away. Now, copies of the video are rumoured to be circulating on the dark web, which is quite horrific. And although an attorney close to the case also said that clearly both faces are visible in the video, the younger person, the celebrity, does not appear to know that they are being filmed. Naturally. Mm. 
the celebrity is also very worried that this will haunt him if it ever gets out on the internet. Forever. He said he felt victimised at the time it happened and now he feels victimised again. Is this real? Who is it? All we really know about the video is that it was filmed at the Atlanta home of P. Diddy and it is of a pornographic nature. Now, we know that the feds have got loads of these tapes and an officer for Homeland Security actually said that having looked at the tapes, they can see and confirm there are many famous faces on them. Although he couldn't confirm that this particular tape was part of the bunch that was taken from Diddy's house. Alleged S-tapes. So I guess it all starts here. I guess there's a lot of people quaking in their boots right now, and genuinely so, mm -hmm. because I think this A-list celeb has acknowledged that it is them on the tape, and they're horrified by it. So there's a Ooh. lot of people in Hollywood should be very scared if they've been at one of these parties, because he filmed everything. He filmed everyone. Who? Who is this person that said that I was them. In something and you have to live it, I always try to find, you know, why God thinks it's necessary for me to experience this right now, you yes. know? And, you know, I think that just what you're doing, this kind of connectivity, what people are uh, uh, able to experience, able to discover, having to slow down for a minute, you know, I think the, the recognizing the danger I have insider information on Diddy and Kevin Hart's involvement. I know this because I was on a TV show with a girl who go. was actively dating Diddy at the time. Here we there go. I am. A quick Google search will tell you who she is. This girl was paparazzi with Diddy back in 2022-2023. Obviously, the cast was concerned about her because the Cassie lawsuit just dropped before filming. Now, the first week of filming just had to be Valentine's Day. Now, Diddy's girl got a very expensive bouquet of flowers delivered on Valentine's Day, but she refused to tell anybody who it was from. It's a reality show, so obviously drama went down. Diddy's girl decided to leave the house for a week. So my girl and I decided to break into her room to redecorate it for show purposes. Just playing along with the drama of the show, we were shocked by what we found. Bro, there's no way. Bro. Then they went through her stuff. Oh my god, from Puff. The flowers were from Diddy. Love Puff. This sent my girlfriend into a spiral. As a woman, she was terrified that Diddy had our address. She let the girl know how she felt and put the card back where she found it. The girl told Diddy what happened and then Diddy threatened production. So the Diddy girl started screaming at my girlfriend. Yeah. Saying that Diddy was going to sue her because of what she wrote on the note. Worried that we were all going to discuss the sick shit that he was doing on our TV show. The fact that he wanted to silence a girl that he doesn't even know for writing on a note is absolutely insane. Production then pulled every cast member aside and instructed us to no longer have any Diddy conversation for the duration of the show. Mm. Diddy threatened to bankrupt our TV show and my girlfriend. We Damn. thought it ended there, right? But then Diddy's girl got mentioned in a lawsuit that came out publicly. When this went down, Diddy's girl happened to be in a fight with another castmate. Now that castmate just happened to be dating JLo's ex-boyfriend Casper. Man, what the Diddy's girl was scared that the other castmate was going to use this Diddy stuff against her during their fight. So she decided to make a call to guess who? Kevin Hart. Now at the time, none of us knew it was actually Kevin Hart until later on. So Kevin Hart called Casper and threatened him to make sure he gets his girl in check on the show. Now Casper's girlfriend told all of us that Diddy's girl was also sleeping with Kevin Hart, who happens to be married with Ch Oh hell no. Bro, what is all this shit? What is all this shit, bro? This sounds like shit. Children and best friends with Diddy. Kevin Hart clearly made the call to Casper to ensure that Diddy's girl stayed quiet about the affair that him and her were having because once again, he's married. Kind of weird that Diddy and Kevin Hart are both sleeping with the same girl and threatening our TV show, isn't it? 
Now listen, I'm just an ordinary blue collar worker from Jersey, okay? Who happens to be dating a famous OF model, which is how I got on the show in the first place. Now, I'm not a social media star, I'm not famous, I have no reason to lie about any of this shit, okay? Now, the only reason I'm telling you guys all this is because when I was in Hollywood filming this TV show, I went through some sick, twisted shit, okay? So, let me know if you guys want to hear about it all, because I'd be happy to make a part two. Said to me... No. I want to hear about that. Take your clothes off. And I said no. And I left. And they told me they were going to burn all my music. And they didn't stop. They didn't stop asking me. And then I just froze and I just... I don't, re I don't even remember. <laughs> And I will not say his name. I understand this Me Too movement. I understand that some people feel really comfortable with this, and I do not. I do not ever want to face that person again. Who is she talking about? I mean, I ain't see the B. Whole Diddy's thing. old bodyguard says that you have to be careful what you ask for when you talk to demons. He says that he heard that Nipsey Hussle told P. Diddy that he wanted his album to have the same impact as Biggie's album, Life After Death. Mm. He had gotten in, in front of Puffy one time and he told Puff that he was putting out this music and I guess Puff was helping him in some kind of way. And he that. said something. And that what he said was, I need my music and my album to have the same feel of that life after death. Back Puff as a producer, as well as all the other hats he wear, but I think one of his most valuable contributions to hip hop culture has been as a producer. Mm. Yeah. And so I wanted to I wanted to tap into that, you know what he did for Biggie on Life After Death. Mm. Like Biggie's album. Now, you taking a spiritual person who's asking for something. Mm. He said I wanted that same feel as Life After Death. That same feel was that that Biggie got murdered and he went on to sell about 10 million albums mm. or 10 million copies. I was saying, you got to watch what you say to demons because mm. it just might come true. You just got to watch what you say, brother, because God said that you say it by mouth, you believe it in thy heart and it shall happen. And when you got a strong, strong spirit and you that type of person, you got to watch what you say out your mouth, man. I agree with that. But somebody convinced him that that would be a good look for him. But no disrespect. He got what he asked for. Mm. Nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle was killed in a mm. shooting outside his clothing store in Los Angeles. Investigators say yesterday afternoon the rapper was shot multiple times in the parking lot at Marathon Clothing. It's a store mm. he opened in 2017. Two other men were also shot. They ended up surviving. Police are still searching for the gunman. That suspect is not in custody and currently we're going to start canvassing the area talk to any witnesses, and also we're gonna canvas all the local area for any videos that may be uh, surfaced. Now, Nipsey was incredibly involved in his local community. He was working to prevent gang violence. He helped spear a major art initiative called Destination Crenshaw. It's a 1.3 mile open air museum featuring local art. He recently helped launch Vector 90 as well. It's a Crenshaw based STEM learning center and workspace mm. dedicated to developing science and technology education in the area. He was only 33 years old. Rest in peace to Nip, man, for sure. Diddy's four ex-girlfriends. What are they up to now? Number one, Misa Hilton. 
She is Diddy's first publicly known girlfriend, and they have a son named Justin. Now she is the global creative partner of luxury brand MCM. Diddy pays her child support every month until their son turns 21. Number 2. Kim Porter. She was with Diddy for 13 years and had three children. Regrettably, Kim Porter passed away at the age of 47. Mm. Her friends once claimed that her death was related to Diddy and that she was about to expose some dark secrets about Diddy. Mm. Number 3. Cassie Ventura reports say that Diddy is extremely controlling over her and even has inappropriate behavior. After breaking up with Diddy, she accused Diddy of abusing her during their relationship. However, mm. Diddy's lawyer denied these accusations. Number 4. Jennifer Lopez. After breaking up with Diddy, she continues her glorious career. She has achieved remarkable results in music and also performed outstandingly in the film industry. She often attends Diddy's events and parties. The two have always maintained a friendly relationship. Would J Lo get called to the carpet? Nick been sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you know you've been sucking. <laughs> Yeah, a Diddy party sounded like a good time. Right. You know, we, we, oh, you. I remember being 16, 17, standing out in the cold in New York trying to get into a Diddy party. It is alleged that Nick Cannon is currently in a state of great panic. If you're familiar with the Wild and Out show, then you probably know who Nick is. <laughs> right. Nick and Diddy's relationship is rumored to be deeply rooted. In fact, Nick is one of the few celebrities who has publicly defended Diddy on various occasions, really? despite overwhelming incriminating evidence that could send him behind bars for the rest of his life. Really? It is alleged that Nick Cannon is currently in a state of great panic. If you're familiar with the Wild and Out show, then you probably know who Nick is. Didn't you just say that? Nick and Diddy's relationship is rumored to be deeply rooted. In fact, that? Nick is one of the few celebrities who has publicly defended Diddy on various occasions, despite overwhelming incriminating evidence that could send him behind bars for the rest of his life. But what is the link between Nick Cannon and Diddy? Why is he reportedly freaking out following Diddy's indictment? Right. A new video has recently surfaced reportedly making him a person of interest in the ongoing case. Watch this video to catch the details. Before we get into the story, it's important to look at Nick's life journey and the circumstances that led him to Diddy's inner circle. The circumstances. Cannon's passion for entertainment began early in life. After graduating from Monte Vista High School in 1998, Cannon references from artists, including Diddy. Diddy's when she put out those pictures Com CBS in July 2020 was the result of controversial remarks he made during an episode of when she put out those pictures of the dude pulling his pants down and it looked like some gay act that was going on he got on the phone he said let me tell you this when I get back to New York City if she's on the radio station, he's talking to a radio executive. He said, nobody that I deal with, nobody that I know is going to do anything with y'all. No business at all. It ain't going to be no artists, no nothing. Gonna come. He's telling people that at a radio station. When we got back to New York City, Wendy Williams was in Philly. Uh, we come from a very homosexual era of hip-hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. Wow. Wow. The one simple mistake that P. did is Sean Combs. I ain't gonna lie, I was like, hold on, is this Wendy Williams' sister or something? Anyway. Made that would cost him his freedom and his fortune. His mistake was to videotape. The tapes that he had in order to hold over someone else shall be what will convict him. Mm. His attorneys will attempt to say that these were seized illegally and that the tapes were made without the consent of the parties. Now that goes two ways. In Florida, you have to have 
a two-person consent if you're going to record a videotape. You know everybody did not consent to that. California, there are some exceptions. There's also a two-party consent state. Federal, not so. And it's also criminal. His own tapes will convict him. One simple mistake. Beryl Thompson McCleary. Mm-mm-mm. All them terabytes. I know you had mentioned there was pictures of girls that you found, like oh, yeah. naked photos of of girls and stuff, like while you guys were together. Mm-hmm. Like his nanny or whatever. This her name was like Nikki. She I saw like her sending him pictures of her um, vagina to his phone and. And I asked him, I was, and he was like, well, what do you expect? You're fucking with a rock star. Like, that's the, that's what he would say to me. Whoa. But then I would watch him, like, treat other women better than he treat me. I never had a man put his hands on me. So um, it was like he put his hands on me and made me feel like... It was always like a push and pull with him. It's like he would pull me close to him and push me away at the same time, which confused me. Yeah, she sounded like she'd been through some stuff, man. He did, he went. He went wrong when he went, went against that liquor company and he demanded that for all of his evil deeds, he finally be considered an equal partner. He forgot his skin color, you know, it doesn't matter how many white men you lay with, you're still black in America. And you don't get to call those boys out. See, people aren't really looking at when Diddy's troubles started happening. He became vulnerable with that lawsuit with that liquor company when he demanded an equal share. Kind of like how when Bill Cosby mm. After all the money he made for NBC, he demanded his equal share. And then here come all the stories and all the lawsuits. It's always the same game. <laughs> they don't do anyone different. Mm. You step out of line, they wrap your hand. I think what the elites really didn't count on is that one they wrapped his hand, thought he was going to be there to gouge him on the side. What happened? Because people have been waiting for Diddy. They've been waiting for their peace. And then you have the opportunist, like your so-called best friend, who has like this odd habit of making friends and making memories and making money and making victims with people mm. and just keeps on sliding away in their demise and then assuming all of their power and control. And I'm talking about Mr. Carter. Oh. Mr. Carter has been very not so a good friend in the in the Diddler's downfall. He's been very delinquent. And now all of a sudden he's demanding in-person visits and he can't get them. I wonder why I, Sean Combs and Sean Carter are both government informants and have been. Mm. They 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 know they do these things. They know they've been doing these things. See, they, they were just never supposed to get caught mm. out loud where they, you know, the police can't just cover it all up. See, did she be talking, talking, boy. Now, there's a viral video going around where Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre are sitting there and they were on TRL. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Dre's like, hey. Uh, I don't know why ain't nobody talking about when Carson Daly went to them Diddy parties. <laughs> because Carson Daly did go to them Diddy parties. Mm -hmm. No different than Ashton Kutcher. Damn. Okay. I... No different than Hype Williams. She be... <laughs> she be All playing. Jennifer Lopez had to do was marry a white boy, uh, you know, Oscar winner, for people to stop remembering that she had a gun in her pocketbook. She had gunshot residue on her hands mm. the night that Natanya was was shot okay. at that club. Mm. For all we know, that bullet came from the gun that was in her hand. And not once has she spoken up for the betterment of that woman. Not once has she mm. donated to her family or for her medical bills. 
that she's still paying or say something in her defense to stop Puffy from gaslighting her and trying to put hits out on her because he was afraid that maybe one day they would open the case and she still has the bullet fragments in her face like J-Lo has said nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you really thought that just running off and marrying Ben Affleck was was going to take you out of the the ditty downfall? Hmm. But it saved her the first time, though, didn't it? Because as soon as that club was over and as soon as they finished interrogating her, when she sat there and cried like a baby, I don't want to go to jail, I don't want to go to jail, Benny Medina put her with that drunk white boy <laughs> until she ran him off. Like, there are people sitting here screaming out, at the toll that the atrocities that Sean Combs has done to their lives and you're trying to avoid your part in the story or the fact that you never spoke up. You know, you want to tell people on the loan, put it out there that the movie was enough, was about you getting away from Puffy, but you didn't think about the trail of girls that you left behind? Mm. Happens to Cassie if J-Lo had to say something. The diddler back then. Mm. Mm -hmm. Would Cassie have ever been a victim? Answer me that. Mm. Oh, because yeah. that situation happened in the late 90s. Oh, that situation yeah. happened before Aaliyah passed away. And Aaliyah passed away in 2001. He didn't get with Cassie until 2009, 15 years after he was with Jennifer. Mm. And she had to come forward about the abuse that she suffered in a relationship with Sean Combs. Cassie would never have gone through what she's gone through. J-Lo wow. being a stand Bitch, is wow. Cassie not getting punted in a fucking hallway? Wow. Wow. Kim was one of the first girls who was brave enough to get tapes and get what she needed to get. You understand? This is commerce. This is bank exchange on flesh and mm. pride and ego. Tamika knew she could get Usher because she had evidence of what he was doing with the Diddler. And guess what? Rather than going to the police and doing the right thing when that boy drowned on Lake mm -hmm. Lanier, Usher did nothing for his stepchild. Matter of fact, I know for a fact he paid money to have that investigation <clears throat> shut down. Whoa. And there has been talks that she was willing to sacrifice her child to get ahead. Now, don't forget, not long after that, she went to the coma. You remember she's in the coma? Because she got banished off. She had to get that plastic surgery cheap. Mm. She did. That's why she went out of country, because she was told over here in the States that nobody would perform that ceremony. It was too dangerous for her. That surgery was too dangerous for her. And that went somewhere else. She kept going until she got somewhere with it and they fixed up real good. And guess what? Not long after that, her and us was over. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. What no love there? Mm. It's blackmail. Stevie J should be charged. Mary J. Blige should also be charged. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez should definitely be charged. Uh, should I keep going? I mean, you're hitting it on. <laughs> Jay Z should be charged. Khaled should be mm. charged. Rick Roth should be charged. Damn. Usher should be charged and tried with him. Mm. Off of Justin Bieber alone. Now, Carisha and Rick Ross just sat down together. An interview. Yeah, I know. Two diddy do our bops. What a reunion. Mm. <laughs> Only thing they got in. in, in uh, <laughs> Now. She be talking, boy. Let's just be real. 
how the hell is any of this shit we're talking about actually happening in real life without the authorities knowing about it, having some knowledge of it, mm. and no control of stopping it? You pay off the police. Yeah, but but why is it being said that police have been paid off, authorities have been paid off, it's being proven that people are being paid off, and there's no major news story about those police officers being investigated, Ooh. about those people being arrested, about those Ooh. people being shut down. Why is qualified immunity creating blanket coverages for for hurts in and out of the system? <laughs> They got hip hop cops and none of these see those kids. You got 15 different people in the past 10 years. Go and do interviews with Vlad. Calling themselves hip hop cops. Mm. <laughs> Y'all saw none of this. And you, you didn't go and take any of this to the higher ups. You didn't take it to the commissioner. You didn't take it to the police oversight committee. Why is it just falling on the bad guys? Why, why is not it falling on? I, I mean, honestly, if we Ooh. really take an honest look at all of this is going on, it's making the American justice system and our police force look totally inept. That's a good point. That is a good point. I have my own tapes. I've seen what they do. The ritualistic behaviors. Putting girls in the suitcases, dumping them in alleyways. It's, it's, it's horrifying. So Everyone knows. Jaguar Wright has recently made serious allegations against Diddy, claiming she has incriminating footage of him. She also mentioned disturbing stories from his parties, alleging that women were placed in suitcases That's and crazy. discarded. These claims add to the growing controversy surrounding That's Diddy, crazy. who has faced numerous accusations in the past. Wright's remarks have sparked further speculation and attention online, although no concrete evidence has been provided to support her statements. As always, such claims should be approached with caution until more information is available. Everyone knows. And every person that's sitting there trying to act surprised knows very well. Mm. She be in her bag, dog. 50 isn't just as bad as Diddy. 50 actually has a heart. He's a lovable thug. You know? Ask, somebody should ask Soldier Boy how loving he is. He's very loving. Hmm? All that time they spent together and the way he believed in him. Oh my God. They were almost inseparable. Truth is, Curtis is a swish. You are. Been a swish. Okay. For many years, everyone knows it. The reason why I haven't got behind Curtis Jackson is because the only reason he wants them out of the way is so he can take over. That's the only reason. Okay, there's a Sheena Lakani. Thank you for camming up, ma'am. You can cam down now. Until I get to know you, I'm going to put a banner up. Okay? And um, once I do that, I'll let you up. But right now, we're up. You know what? I think this is a fitting can, one to I put can, up. We're going to um, put this banner up let today. Me look up her. Because after everything that Kendrick Lamar did for Juneteenth, I need it. I don't know what she was talking about at the end. My son died because he was my son. Mm. Can, you, can you speak on that? Can I speak on it? Sure. Like, you said... It was your son. He died because of your. He was leg. targeted because he—he's my son. He, like more. he was about to. He was working on his EP. Mm. I bought Dalladelphia for him, so he didn't have to sign to a company because I knew what it was going to do. He interned at Rock Nation, and they approached him to sacrifice me. Mm. I saw his death when he was 19. I moved us here to stop it, to event, to prevent it, to avoid it. All right. 
And it happened anyway. Mm. And see, that's when I knew that Kanye's mom, Kanye would have never wanted Don to dead. Not even by natural causes. Mm. I was happy when he finally accepted it because they sacrifice your loved ones, whether you agree or not. Mm. See, sometimes you agree and they, they put you in position, you know, but sometimes you disagree and they take them anyway to show you what the harm is. Giovanni, his death is why I do what I do. Mm. That's real. I just read all 62 pages of the newest Diddy lawsuit, and by far this is the most disturbing thing I've ever read. This is the point where I usually tell you to grab a cocktail, but this time I'm asking you to grab some tissue and definitely your earphones. Ashley Parham is the newest plaintiff to file suit against Diddy, but she also is suing a few others. She's also suing Christina Coram, here she is, Shane Pierce, and three John Doe's and one Jane Doe. And for those who don't know, John Doe and Jane Doe is a fictitious name that is used when the person's real name is unknown or being concealed. What we do know about these people is that Christina is an employee of Diddy. She's also known as his right-hand woman. And Shane, unfortunately, is someone that Ashley considered to be a friend. Back in February of 2018, Shane and Ashley met. He actually came to her rescue as she was getting into an altercation with another man at a bar. After the whole ordeal, a bunch of people are standing outside the bar talking and then Shane decides to FaceTime Diddy, kind of showing everyone, look who my friend is, I'm important. Ashley kind of makes a face and is completely unimpressed and makes a statement on how she believes that Diddy has something to do with Tupac's death. Diddy, who's still on FaceTime, overheard the comment that Ashley made and told her she would pay for saying that. So after this whole ordeal at the bar, Shane and Ashley what? become friends and they keep in touch. March 2018 rolls around and Shane calls Ashley and asks her to come over to help him take his cancer medication. He said he was too weak to open the bottles. Little did Ashley know this is actually a setup and potentially about to be one of the worst days of her life. After she arrives, they make small talk. He tells her how he just got this new car and he wants to give her a spin. Now we know hindsight is 2020, but this is a sign. How you too weak to open medicine, but you well enough to drive? Nonetheless, they head for a little spin in his car and head back onto the house. Once back inside his apartment, she notices that he leaves the door slightly open. So she mentions it to him and he says, oh, you know, the door's been tripping. I told maintenance about it. They should be fixing it soon. About 10 minutes later, guess who comes right on in? You guessed it. Did he? Oh, but he doesn't come Whoa. alone. He's there with Christina and also his bodyguard. The bodyguard is named as John Doe number one. Also, Jane Doe is there, another woman who she does not know, but she describes her to be in her 30s with blonde hair. And John Doe number two and three are there, who's supposedly a friend of Diddy and Shane's and also Diddy's driver. According to the lawsuit, John Doe number three, the driver never came inside. He stayed in the car. Ashley states that Diddy immediately started to antagonize her about the comments she made about Tupac. Mm. He started walking towards her with the knife, held it up to the right side of her face and said that he what? should give her a Glasgow smile. If you don't know what that is, it usually is when the victim gets a cut on each side of their mouth all the way to their ears. Then what? Christina urged Diddy to stop suggesting that it wouldn't be a good idea. They could just sell her to one of their clients. Then Christina went on to threaten Ashley and said she would ship her off to anywhere in the world and she would never see her family again. Diddy and Shane then proceeded to strip Ashley of all her clothing they pulled a bottle out of a bag and started pouring that liquid all over her Whoa. she was in fear at first thinking that it was some kind of chemical but then she soon realized that it was baby oil then diddy instructed christina to insert what looked like a syringe up ashley's badge then something went wrong whatever was a part of their plan with this syringe christina wasn't doing it right so diddy started inserting it himself christina Whoa. and jane doe decide to leave and so now ashley is alone with diddy shane john doe number one and two next diddy picks up a television remote that's nearby and starts violently inserting it into ashley Whoa. ashley is hysterically crying and screaming and diddy instructs shane to flip her over on her stomach because he doesn't want to see or hear none of that Diddy then instructed Shane to put a pillow over her head to muffle some of the screams and then Shane proceeded to R word her anally. After Whoa. Shane, then Diddy, John Doe number one and John Doe number two all took turns doing the same. She also stated that before John Doe started, he doused her with more oil and then jumped on her back as if she was a slip and slide, which knocked the wind out of her because he was a 
large person. Whoa. She also stated that while John Doe number one was doing this to her, that Diddy was sitting in a chair in the room masturbating and filming. During this whole ordeal, John Doe's phone falls near the bed. She tries to reach for it but can't grab it and she says Diddy starts laughing and says he owns her now. She mm. said that by the time it was over, she could not move and she had no control over her bodily functions. At some what? point, Christina comes back into the room and starts giving Ashley an IV. I think that this is a good spot to end this video. I don't want it to get too long and we're not even halfway through the lawsuit. So let me know what you think thus far in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. What? 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 Y'all are going to think I'm crazy and I'm just okay with that because I just have to share this because my mind is blown, okay? First of all, at work today, I was doing a lot of like social media analytics. I do social media for a living. Today I was doing analytics metrics, so I was just doing big documents. And when I do big documents at work, I always try to find like podcasts and stuff to listen to while I'm just working for a few hours. So anyways, this thing popped up on my YouTube recommended and it was basically a deep dive of P. Diddy since the 90s up until present day and every bad thing he's ever done. So I was like, I mean, it's a two hour long episode, so let's just put it on. So anyways, I was literally listening and the more I listened, the more disgusted I got because the worst P. Diddy got. And I remember thinking like as P. Diddy grew richer and as the years went on, he got worse. Like it's like the money was getting to his head and he would always do something illegal and then pay somebody off allegedly and then get free. And like with his money came so much power. Mm -hmm. So anyways, this was not even a Christian podcast I was listening to, but the guy on the podcast today referenced first Timothy chapter six, verse 10. And that comes into play in a minute. So anyways, I finished up my work, literally listened to the whole two hours and finished my work. And then I came back and I was doing my Bible study for the night and I was finishing up James, just doing my little routine. And I was on James chapter five today. And I've been doing really deep dives in James uh, almost every night. And so anyways, I'm in James chapter five and I didn't even read the title of the chapter. But I finished James chapter four the other night, okay? So I'm really just going in, in order. The title, I'm like reading and listening to my Bible scholar. He's a Bible scholar. His name's David Guzik. He's literally the best. But anyways, um, he's like just really breaking down James chapter five. And I'm reading it and I'm like, why does this literally sound like I'm reading about P. Diddy? I look at the title of this chapter or the say section the of chapter five. It ain't gonna say the title. And it is literally titled Warning to the Rich. Uh oh. And so I'm like literally just flabbergasted, okay? So I'm like, this is starting to feel a little bit too close to home, especially after everything I listened to today. This is weird. I'm feeling weird. So I keep going through my Bible study and I'm just doing listening to David. So the first verse of chapter five, it says, come now you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth eaten. Your mm. gold and silver, silver have corroded and mm. their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last mm. days. Mm -hmm. Behold, wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, mm -hmm. which you have kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. Mm -hmm. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of the host. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. Mm -hmm. You have fattened your hearts in, mm -hmm. the, in a day of slaughter. Mm -hmm. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. This is, this is the first section of James chapter 5. And when David, my Bible study man, was like breaking it down, after he read the first few verses, he stopped and referenced 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the same verse that homeboy referenced today when I was listening to that podcast on the deep dive of P. Diddy. Mm. So anyways, the reason why all this is happening to P. Diddy is because of all of the lawsuits and stuff that have been put out towards him. And... The P. Diddy's victims, a lot of them were 
like the poor people, especially in his eyes, mm -hmm. they were just trying to make it in the industry or it was the children he was harmed. And a lot of those children were allegedly supplied to P. Diddy from Child Protective Services. And so mm. these are children that have nothing and no one and no family. And P. Diddy's allegedly mm. taking them and in slavery and doing these disgusting things to them anyways. So the poor, right? And it literally says in James chapter 5, that the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of the host. David said it better. He said, your workers, so the richest workers, the poor people, have cried out against you. And God hears the cries of the poor when they cry out against the oppression of the rich. So anyways, I'm not even done with chapter 5 because I'm about to do the other sections. But I have to pause and, and share this because I'm like... This is crazy. It's literally, oh my gosh, y'all. The Bible is just so, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. The Bible is just so freaking real. It is so real sometimes that it like genuinely freaks me out. But this is what is happening to P. Diddy. James chapter 5 verses 1 through 6 is a literal manifestation of what is happening in P. Diddy's life right now. Someone tell me I'm wrong. Because this is insane. Mm. Breaking news, P. Diddy is now being investigated for Tupac's murder, and here are the mm. top five things you need to know about it. Number five is that Tupac's family hired an attorney and a team of investigators to get to the bottom of this. They've long believed that there's a link between Diddy and Tupac's murder, mm. and now that Diddy has been arrested, they're taking this more seriously. Number four is that Keith D., who was the assassin of Tupac, uh, was a bodyguard for Diddy for a number of years in the 1990s. Number three is that Keith D. in 2009 claimed that Diddy uh, paid him a million dollars to kill Tupac. Now, this is wow. back in 2009 when nobody thought Diddy did anything other than cut hot tracks. Number two <laughs> is that Eminem uh, in his song Kill Shot claims that Diddy had both Biggie Smalls and Tupac assassinated. Now, this could be chalked up to just rapper beef and, you know, sort of the extravagance of rap lyrics, but Eminem has been known to call people out for a lot of their dirty secrets, mm. and, uh, you know, he's been in the entertainment industry forever and knows a lot of the inner secrets that I think, you know, he was trying to bring something to light there. If you like this list and want more about other nonsense, follow me. Leave me a comment if you think Diddy did it. Uh, I mean, you could tell me he started the Chicago Fire at this point, and I'd probably believe it. Also, follow my fiance Samantha, who I've tagged. Number one, this is interesting. Um, back in the day, there was an article from the LA Times uh, about Diddy being connected to Tupac's murder and they ended up retracting it because mm. they said they had some faulty journalism but we all wonder what that reasoning is now alright so that was another TikTok compilation of P. Diddy Jaguar Wright leak footage it's a lot going on in this case man it's a lot going on on and we still at the beginning of this man you made it to the end of this video drop real one for real in the comments because that's what you are don't forget i got a tiktok playlist you can go through watch binge watch conspiracy theories all type of stuff that's going on in the world but hey till next time though self-love and positivity fire squad i got you when you know it Whew.